Who the Wild Things Are with Ryan McGuire. You gotta listen to your body. Oh my God, maybe, you know, I could get out there. I could do this. Let's take a ride. Find your wild side. Real stories. See with your own eyes. It's so beautiful. I'm gonna have the best time out here. Yeah, I was in tears. I was just like, that's the best, man. This episode of the podcast is brought to you by Oslo. Oslo is a non-alcoholic seltzer company based here in Denver, Colorado, and they're making these amazing seltzers. Right now I'm drinking on the lime and mint spritz. Uh, they're full of electrolytes, adaptogens, antioxidants, and more importantly than all of that is they taste incredible. These have been what me and my friends have been drinking all summer, and each one of them has a purpose. The lime and mint sprints is meant to energize and uplift. They have new flavors coming out, lavender, lemongrass. This is more of a soothing and revitalizing drink, as well as the lemon and holy basil, which is meant to replenish and restore. If you're trying to find something other than water to drink, these are your go-to. They taste incredible. They kind of satisfy that urge. Uh, to have something a little bit sweeter without getting the alcohol, all the sugar, the bad ingredients. If you're interested in trying out Oslo, head over to drinkoslo.com and you can use my code Ryan15 for 15% off at checkout. Appreciate you guys. Let's get to the show. Welcome back to Who the Wild Things Are. My name is Ryan McGuire and I'm here to bring you conversations with the most wild folks on the planet. If you're enjoying the podcast, please leave us a rating and review on your podcast platform of choice. And if you enjoy the episode, share it with a friend. Appreciate you guys. Let's get it going. Osborne. Yes, sir. Thanks for uh, joining and uh, doing a little recap of the crazy mission we just went on for uh, the Teton picnic. Yeah. Before we get there, I want to just give people like maybe a little bit of background um about you so i guess the first question i'd have is like did you because we're going to talk about the tea dog picnic which is this crazy um kind of contrived mission that we did in (sighs) jackson hole but did you when was the first time that you did kind of like an outdoorsy effort or like got exposed to that world i would say like grew up going on backpacking trips so there was like aspects of that within that it was very like it was with my family it was very com- comfortable i guess in that like my dad would take me and my four like four of us that were ready to hike and we'd do like three four day trips out in the um seven devils up mm. in idaho so i have always loved the outdoors um as far as like bigger pushes like teton picnic i mean that was yeah definitely the first um first I would say like big, big push in that, in that way done like the one we did the, a couple of weeks ago, the mon or no, what was that? Um, massive and Elbert mm-hmm. a one day with like two of the big peaks in Colorado. Yeah. So that was another, like, you know, putting in the 15 hour, 10, 15 hours, like in that range, there hasn't been many of those Yeah. at all. <laughs> but your, your background, your, the way you grew up was different. You didn't go to like, the normal school where you kind of like yeah. play your sports throughout elementary school and you you kind of had this different sort of upbringing which i think in a lot of ways the folks i have in this podcast a lot of them have like kind of a different background and mm-hmm. i think you're a good example of that and it kind of makes you a creative different type of individual so yeah paint a little bit of a picture like contrast wise of how you grew up versus maybe most people listening to this pod for sure. Yeah, definitely wasn't a super normal upbringing. Um, yeah, I grew up in Northern Idaho primarily and I have six siblings and was homeschooled, uh, very religious family. So like home church, homeschooled, just like family was kind of everything. Um, so no, no, um, organized sports. I would do like PE stuff with um, some of the homeschool groups. Uh, And yeah, so really didn't play any sports growing up out of high school. Like once I was kind of done with that or not after I like moved out, then I started playing a lot of beach volleyball 
and but work was always like a big piece and so like i think a lot of my athleticism or just like stamina comes from work just being a builder and putting in long days and yeah me and my brother talk about it all the time we're like there's not many people that like we hire that can really i don't know we have a different work ethic or speed and efficiency when we work yeah that is different for sure yeah and i think part of that is like you said the fact that you guys are building these really cool things i think you two are also just freaks yeah i think people that see you the first time they're like what is that guy like he looks like a freak yeah i think that's that's kind of a yeah a common reaction to us because like we can maybe we're not putting in all the hours of training and we're definitely not the best at these events but like my brother just did a triathlon and he's done marathons with like maybe a month of training, maybe no training. And so it's just kind of this thing where like, we have it in us. Mm -hmm. We haven't reached that potential of like what that could be, I would say. Yeah, because of the different background, I guess you have this untapped potential. Mm -hmm. Like even when I first met Daniel and we'll get into the story a little bit, like on the biking section, I was like a little bit worried because he was like, yeah, I did a triathlon and like the bike was you know, 10 miles and the run was five miles. And we're like going into this huge wilderness effort that, yeah. you know, very few people on earth could tackle. And unbeknownst to me, Daniel just like popped up and dominated. Yeah. And like, just totally unassuming. You would never know, like if you saw him in the grocery store that this guy can just pretty much step up to any challenge on earth. For sure. Yeah. And I think that's some of that is just to do with like being raised on a farm up in Idaho, where it was just like, it was a lot of work, just like with the animals, with the land, like, and then we were always just like mountain biking or skiing or whatever, riding four wheelers or whatever it is on our place. And then, yeah, working hay bales, working, working all of it. Yeah. <laughs> Something to be said for like farmer strength versus just like mm -hmm. gym, gym bro strength. Like there's yeah. definitely a different level of strength there. I think so. And there's also like this aspect where like not ever doing organized sports, I think none of us really know how athletic we are maybe because there wasn't, we weren't like competing with other people from like our whole lives. Mm -hmm. It's more just now every once in a while it's like, oh wait, I actually did pretty good at that. Right. So done like a lot of, we've done a lot of like Spartan races and Tough Mudders and that type of thing together. And yeah, always love that type of stuff. Yeah. Pushing bodies a bit. Yeah. And I've gotten to kind of be part of your journey as you go and try all this stuff. We did High Rocks Worlds together this year. Yeah. Which you did amazing at. And then, uh, yeah, now transferring to kind of like ultra mountain type sports. Mm -hmm. What do you like more between like a High Rocks hybrid thing or ultra mountain sports? Uh, mountains, for sure. What's. Yeah. I think just like, I mean, I just love being in in the mountains. Being in nature is just so rewarding to me. I think, yeah, I've never been a runner. I don't really enjoy running that much, but always like if I'm on a trail, then it's exciting because you're like deciding where to put each foot. And it's like all these um, decisions that micro decisions that you're making throughout like every step versus yeah, on a, on a road or smooth trail where I'm just like, okay, this isn't, this isn't quite lighting me up. Yeah, I've never gotten like the bug for road running. No. It doesn't really do it for me. No. So when was the first time you heard about the Teton picnic um, and kind of what was your reaction? I guess in that, in your own words, tell us what the Teton picnic is. Okay. Well, I think I was, I was talking with you because yeah, you've, like you were saying, you've actually been a really big part in some of these different events that I've been able to do recently and just like pushing me. Yeah. Helping me see that I can do it, I guess. And I was feeling, yeah, at the beginning of this season was really wanting to do some type of ultra like mountain ultra. And I was asking you which ones you think I should do. And you're like, well, I mean, there's the Teton picnic and yeah, I had never heard of this, which is basically starting from Jackson hole, downtown Jackson hole at the, the antler arches ride your bike, um, 23 miles, was it 22 to Jenny Lake swimming across Jenny Lake, which is like 1.3 miles climbing or free soloing the grand another 11 miles, run back down, swim back across, bike back into town. 
And I like initially I wrote that off because I don't know how to swim. Like I grew up swimming in rivers. Like I can swim out of a current. I can surf. I can do like I'm safe in water, but not efficient at all. And so I kind of just wrote it off. I'm like, no, I'm not a swimmer. Never going to do that. Mm -hmm. And then I don't know, as we started talking about it more, I was, yeah. And actually like watching my brother, cause he was also very, like kind of af afraid of water, I guess, or like didn't grow up swimming at all. Um, and so he, he did a triathlon and to see, to watch him like training for it and learning how to swim and doing it. I was like, okay, bet. Like I can, I can get behind this. I can teach myself to swim. So it was like a month before I was still like, okay, maybe I'll do part like half of it and I'm going to work on my swimming. So I did a little bit of swimming. It was rough, but like, I felt like I was going to do okay. I was you like, got some good lessons from, from some different folks. Exactly. Yeah. Like everyone has kind of a, somebody that knows something about swimming and everyone's got something to tell you about how to swim. Absolutely. So I got a whole bunch of different like piece of, <laughs> of advice. Some of those were amazing. Some of those were weird, but uh, <laughs> yeah. So I was like practicing swimming. And I was like, okay, I think I like, I got this. I won't be fast maybe, but like it's just a mile and a half. Each way. Each way. At altitude. In the At cold. At altitude. In the cold. Yeah. Yes. So that was... That was my big challenge for sure. Yeah, and I think another thing that's interesting to set the story, and folks can watch this online. There's a YouTube documentary on Wild Ride TV that uh, you know we filmed and it shows the effort. But what I think is interesting kind of as a side story tangentially is that Daniel was like maybe a part of this until two days before, literally. I'm not yeah. like, I'm not talking about like, like exaggerating it was two days before and we mm -hmm. didn't know if daniel was going to join and then he's right. like okay i think i'm in like this guy basically just was winging it and joined us as of two days before the effort uh-huh um and i was kind of waiting on his decision on that because initially we were like okay to make this safe we're going to have be in partners so that if you and mitch want to go ahead and be faster you guys can and then Daniel and I will stay together because we'll probably be slower on the swims. And so I was kind of waiting to see if he was actually going to do it to be to make sure that I wasn't just going to be holding you guys back on the push. Yeah. And so he, yeah, last minute he was like, yep, let's do it. And yeah, and then it was a go. And then it was a go. And we all kind of go down um, to Jackson together. And we all bought a bunch of new gear because we pretty much have no gear. I think... Mitch is like the only like real triathlete in the group. Like he's an Iron Man. He's super mm -hmm. fit. He knows what he's doing. He doesn't really have any weaknesses. <laughs> the rest of them, like I'm battling this parasite. I'm like maybe gonna be able to do it. Maybe not. You're scared about the swim. Daniel's riding like an old bike that has like uh, a leather saddle on it. Uh huh. Um. So there's just a, it was a very gangly group. But it I, was. I thought something that was interesting was the day before we went to go <clears throat> set up essentially on each side of the lake an aid station so mm -hmm. we hung up bags in the trees and luckily the people at the boat dock that we were swimming to um they were super nice and helped us out all weekend yeah. which is super cool about the tetons like they even the park rangers the employees that oh. worked in the park everyone was like rooting for us and trying to help us out on the picnic versus some places the rangers feel more like police yeah like hey I was, do you have a permit i was blown away by how supportive they all were just like they're like oh yeah let's go you guys got this like here you can put your stuff here this is going to be a better spot you can even put some of it on our dock right here that we'll be watching all day for you yeah and so just super helpful i'm like way. oh so the bears won't come down on the dock they're like oh no they will but like <laughs> it, it still might be okay yeah. Like they might not eat your food. And we're like, oh, uh, all right. Yeah. And they said, one of the guys mentioned that he had never seen four people do the picnic together. Really? He had, he had only seen people do the picnic by themselves with a crew, like a support person or in a pair, but he had never seen four okay. people as a group do it. Cause it's, I mean, anywhere from a 11 hour to 20 hour effort. Um, depending on how fast you go uh -huh. and to be able to stay together as a group can be challenging because everyone's on different paces for sure. So I thought that was interesting that he said we were the yeah. first group he had ever seen of four folks. 
Nice. Yeah, I didn't realize that bit. Um, so, morning of, starting at, uh, what did we start at? I think we got up at like 2.30. Got up at 2.30 and we were at the arches by, left the arches at 3.10. Yeah, for folks that don't know, in Jackson, there's this park and they have these arches that are completely composed of elk antlers. And that's kind of like the quintessential starting point for the picnic. Um, and yeah, that's where we started getting rolling. Immediately, it was like, you and Mitch out in front on the bikes and mm -hmm. me and Daniel. And I could tell, like, I felt like Daniel was having to work a lot harder because you're slightly uphill on the first bike. Yeah. And I felt like, you know, his road bike, he had to work a lot harder than, than we did. It felt like that. I'm not sure. Yeah. What all went into that. It was an old bike, but also one that he was like ridden a lot, I guess in the past, <clears throat> but yeah, he was, he was really slow on the, on the bike ride or initially. And yeah, so I was, I was as well as like, okay, maybe this isn't, maybe he's not quite where I thought he was. Yeah. And then we got to the water. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It, it's such an interesting thing because I was thinking the same thing about Daniel and then literally he made the rest of it look so easy and effortless. Mm. So it's funny how like your first impression can be so totally wrong. Right. Um, but yeah, anyways, the way it works is you bike to jackson hole you kind of bike on this road for a while and then you get into teton and then you bike basically across teton national park and so it's dark out the sun is just starting to come up it really isn't even up by the time we're transitioning into the wetsuits and i think as a credit to us and maybe this is because we're all pretty skinny and not great with the cold like we actually were geared up for cold water yeah like we were prepared for once for sure um I don't do well in the cold. And so I went like extra. I had booties, I had a hood, I had gloves, wetsuit, like making sure that I was gonna stay warm because I don't do well in the cold. Yeah. <laughs> or I don't do well when I'm cold. I don't, I don't do well either, especially when it comes to like an ultra effort because a lot of times you're trying to heat back up when you're on like two to 3000 negative calories and like you don't have them to burn. Yeah. So your body just stays cold. It's, it's, and it's kind of a terrifying feeling. Cause like when you're cold and you're like, you know, you haven't done that much that day, you can kind of trust that your body's gonna get back up to like a normal temperature. But when you're freezing cold and mm -hmm. you're way under on calories, it's just like, no, this is permanent. Like you're not, you're not gonna warm back up. Yeah, It's just gonna continue to hurt. So I was definitely trying to avoid that even though I ended up not avoiding it later on. <laughs> Um, how did you feel on the first swim? I, I felt very like hopeful getting into the water, like geared up. And I was like mentally pretty terrified, but I was like, you know what? I got this. Just stay calm. Like we can do this. And then we get in the water and yeah, I was done. Like I, I couldn't, <laughs> I was like, I did, I think it was like one stroke of like, the, what I had been practicing, you know, breathing and all this. And then like, I was starting to have, I guess like panic and I was just like freaking out a little bit. I think some of this had to do with like the wetsuit was real, was probably a bit small for me. Mm -hmm. And so that was kind of like putting a lot of pressure on my neck and chest. And then it was dark. Like you could hardly see the other side of the lake. Yeah and it's a creepy feeling it is like it's like four it was like 4 a.m the sun was definitely not up but it was it was, it was dark um yeah and so like 20 yards into the lake i kind of started freaking out and i'm thinking like okay me and daniel are gonna swim together daniel's just like playing around me and just like like a little seal just having fun and so i'm yeah it took i had to i had to dig pretty deep in that first quarter to get to where I could breathe. It and even like, feels like a little bit laughable. You're oh yeah. sitting there with three other grown men, yeah. you're butt naked in the woods, trying to get a wetsuit on. It's cold as hell outside. And you're looking at what looks like the Atlantic ocean. <laughs> and you're like, you're looking at each other, just kind of laughing. Like, what are we doing? Like, why are we here and whose idea was it to try and swim across this cold ass lake that I can't even begin to see the middle of it, far less see the other side. Yeah. And we're just like, 
are we t- are we doing this? Are we getting <laughs> in here? Are we, is this what we do? Yeah. It's, and there's no there's no race director. There's nobody uh, dinging a cowbell and saying this way. There's no markers. It's just like. You know, you're in the backwoods and you're swimming mm-hmm. across a giant lake and you're not really sure why. Yeah. So I basically finally was able to, I don't know, calm myself down a little bit because I was just like hyperventilating and like couldn't get a breath. And finally, I was just like, OK, I just have to resort to like my old style of swimming, which is basically keep my head as far out of the water as possible. And yeah, like breath stroke, basically. And so, yeah, I kind of just was like, okay, this is just going to be slow and mm-hmm. long and really fucking hard. And so I, I just kind of stuck with that. And put, I, put yourself there for a minute. Before you kind of like had that discussion, did you ever think you were going to drown? Like, were you ever like, fuck, I might not be able to make it across? I mean, with the buoyancy of the wetsuit and the float bag that I was dragging. Yeah, we had little bags behind us for our yeah, goods. I f- I mean, there was like that moment where I definitely couldn't think of like, oh, I'm floating. I'm fine. Um, But then I kind of, yeah, I slowed way down to just like catch my breath to see. And I was like, okay, wait, I am, I am just floating. So I'll be okay. Cause I don't have much body fat, so I don't Mm -hmm. float in water, but with the wetsuit and with the boy in the buoy bag, I was like, okay, I'm going to be safe if I can just like calm down my breathing. Yeah. And so finally it was able to do that. And then it was just like slow and you stayed back with me. Daniel like flew on. Mitch went, went on. Yeah. They They're hammered. quick. And I was just like, okay, I'm sorry, but you need to stay with me. <laughs> <laughs> and I was fine with that. Yeah. I don't mind. And so I just, yeah, I just went really slow, but I can like, when I got to the other side, I was, I was lying to myself the whole swim. I'm like, I'm fine. This is okay. I can do this. Really. I was, I was, pretty worked up but and you so kind of got through it by I held yourself I held it yeah until I got to the shore and then I was like what the fuck was that <laughs> that was so hard and then we all like it was good like we made made light of it and that I think helped me process or like be in the moment a little bit better but then like touching land I've never been so excited to touch land <laughs> <laughs> yeah it's hilarious there's a video in the in the dock of you just me turning the camera, I go, David, how did that go? He goes, I fucking hated it. <laughs> I hated it. Yeah, it was, it was rough. Yeah. Um, and then we got to land and then like the bike was super easy. The first one was really slow and then the swim really challenging for me. But then we got to, to dry ground and I was just feeling amazing. I was like, I, I've already done the hardest part. Yep. And our transition worked pretty well. Like on the other side, we had, mm-hmm food all there we had dry clothes to wear there's no like major you know the thing that you're always scared about is like forgetting something major like for real shoes yeah or like a water bottle and I know. Like, there was really none of that i feel like we did a really good job of staging that first or the second stage point i guess yeah and yeah i had a runner running shoes our rock climbing shoes helmets like gloves food all of that so we geared up and then started started the hike Yeah. So ultimately, like if you think about the effort in total, it's like there's 46 miles of biking, there's three miles of swimming, but those are kind of rounding errors. Like the Mm -hmm. bulk of this is going to be the 11 miles out and the 11 miles back. So like 22 miles total of travel and 7,000 feet of elevation gain and one of the steepest, gnarliest mountain ranges. Yeah. So that in comparison, like they don't really add up. If you, you know, backstroke 1.6 miles, it's still going to take you an hour, Mm -hmm. you know, Mm -hmm. if you are the fastest person that's ever been on the Grand Teton, it's going to take you three hours to get up. It's like, it's really a challenging route. For sure. And yeah, that elevation gain was like the first six miles are pretty much flat. Yeah. And then that last four miles or five miles is pretty much straight up. Yeah. And I felt like kind of tricked by it. I was like feeling pretty good the first six miles. I was like, oh, uh-huh. maybe my stomach's fine. Like maybe I'm good. And then we started going up and up and up and up. And then I just, I got absolutely wrecked. Mm-hmm. Like I was having a hard time keeping up. I was, you know, having, I was getting really dizzy a lot of the time. Like I would walk and I would just like, you know, misstep right and then get back together and misstep left and like really was struggling on the walking uphill. Yeah. So that was, 
not ideal. No. Especially when you know that ahead of you is like a good 90 minutes of like rather technical free climbing. Yeah. So I know it was, and we were also like following this storm or it was like definitely a bit stormy and we were like, we don't know if we've already missed our window. We don't know, maybe it'll open back up for us. Cause it right. was definitely like, we would pass some people on the trail and just like what we were seeing and messages we were getting from home yeah. <laughs> that um, there's like, no, there's a storm. Like you can't, you can't summit in this storm. We had an on-demand uh, weather person in Hannah. She was like, yep. okay, this is the chances right now. And <laughs> here's, here's what it looks like in an hour. Here's what, you know, which, yeah. is, which is nice. But to your point, we had, that couple that came down in front of us and we're like, Hey, did you guys do the Owen Spalding, which is the specific route that we were taking. Mm -hmm. um, and they're like, you know, we went up to the cruxy bit and then we turned around cause it's like really windy and socked in and scary. And you know, yeah. they said something like, as if we were stupid, it was yeah. like, it was like, of course we didn't go up cause look at it. Right. And we were like, okay, <laughs> so can we go? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to remember what they said, but like, unless you're, yeah, stupid. But I think, <laughs> I think ultimately we got lucky by being slower. For sure. Because the weather actually ended up burning off and we actually had tremendous weather. It was yeah. cloudy at the top. Like the views uh -huh. weren't like anything to write home about, but I don't think we ever had over 10 mile an hour winds. No. Like it never even noticed wind. No, like on the on the way back down, oh. it, there was a little bit of wind. Yeah. And that was that was about it. We were like, wow, I'm glad this wasn't earlier. Or and at the top. Like the this top. is like 1,500 feet down from yeah. the Once. summit. Yeah. So the the route, the way it works is like you, you walk through Gannett Canyon and then- Which the is just stunning. Yeah, it's amazing. And I love the vibe of just, um, all the springs and like the water being so pure yeah. that everyone's just drinking straight out of the water. That and was fun. Yeah. Wildflowers and just like, like the glacier up here. And then it's just green and just luscious and so gorgeous. Yeah. And at the same time, I'm like trying not to vomit, just like almost puking in my <laughs> mouth. I'm like, this is so beautiful. I love it. And the rest of us are just having a great time at this point. Yeah. Cause this was kind of before it started getting really steep mm -hmm. and then it, yeah. Then it like picked up quick elevation gain. And I was like, Whoa, this is like not just a hike. Like I had done these 14 ers a couple days before and those were, you know, fine. This felt hard. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it felt a lot harder than most 14 ers in Colorado yeah. I had done. I guess that's just because of the amount of gain and how short the mileage is. Do I you think, think so. that like, and mountaineering like oh if it's 13 miles and 5,000 gain that would be harder than eight miles and 5,000 gain but the reality is it's like it's actually nicer if there's more miles uh-huh to s break up that gain yeah. you'll actually move click quicker through the terrain than if you were um doing it over a shorter mileage right so those six flat miles were kind of like at first we're like oh this is great and i was like oh i wish we could have used some of this to get some of that gain in as well exactly what was your thought going into, like, where was your headspace going into the more technical cruxy bit of climbing? I felt very comfortable. I feel like I've done a lot of scrambly stuff. Um, I feel very confident as a rock climber as well. So I was just like, okay, I know. Yeah. And even hearing about it and watching videos and everything, it's like, okay, so there's exposure, but none of the things are anything more than I can do. Like I can, I know I'll be good on all yep. the moves. And so that just kind of gave me like a, uh, yeah, some confidence, I guess, going into it where I was like, yeah, it'll be scary, but I know I have it. Yeah. I felt similar. Like I think about free soloing as like five, six and under, I feel really comfortable about my personal ability. Right. Um, and the Owen Spalding route is rated five, four. So rock climbing is fifth class on the Yosemite decimal system. And it goes like five, one, five, two, all the way up to five, 15. Mm -hmm. So five, four is a relatively easy pitch, which what that really means is like, there's plenty of rest, plenty of places where, where you could just stop and hang out mm -hmm. plenty of spots where you're not getting like taxed physically. And that's right. exactly what it was. There was plenty of rest. There were always good moves to be made, but damn, was that exposure scary? Like was... you're literally looking down this cliff and it's 2000 feet straight down, like terrifying. Yeah. Yeah. No, no room for error on, on that. 
<laughs> um, <clears throat> so the the first move is what they call the belly roll, mm-hmm. which is kind of this move where you're like hand walking across. I didn't think the belly roll was very scary at all. No. Um, is that because there was like that one maneuver before the belly roll? Yeah, like the all, they call it like the almost belly roll. Okay, that one I felt like, yeah, it was easy, but like super exposed. Belly roll felt pretty comfortable, I would say. Yeah. Um, and yeah, it's the same thing. Like honestly, we did have kind of maybe an advantage because it was pretty cloudy right then. Right. So there'd be times where there's so much cloud that you couldn't even see that it was a three thousand foot. Um, drop if you decided to drop <laughs> and so it was just like oh yeah there's just a cloud right here so right. I'm just gonna do my thing and but right around that point is where Mitch didn't feel comfortable continuing with one of the moves was that the belly roll or the one right after so it was it goes the belly roll and then the crawl and then there's the part where you're supposed to do the second entrance so we did we all did the belly roll you went first I went second and you can see in that so what what had happened was we kind of took an interesting way up on mm-hmm. the upper saddle and we had started doing some kind of like premature chimney climbing right. which I felt really good with you know I thought we made good progress up it but Mitch had like some concerns at that point in the chimney yeah um so I was kind of like okay maybe he's not feeling super comfortable with the climbing right now you have to put yourself in that mindset you've yeah. been on you've been moving for 12 hours at this point like you're exhausted, you're at 13,300 feet. Like for anybody to say like, hey, I don't wanna make this move, I have nothing but respect for. 100%, like, these especially, are, yeah. These are high consequence decisions. <clears throat> and if mm-hmm. anyone's like, yeah, I'm not feeling good about this, I'm like, I would never pressure anyone to yeah. to go through with that. When that's not the popular decision. When exactly. You, when you've like gone 12 hours already, you're like 500 feet from the top of this mountain that's a hard call to make. Yeah. I've had to make that a couple times on other mountains and it's like, that's no fun. So yeah, if someone's not feeling ready for that, uh, very, a lot of respect. Yeah, there. a lot of respect there. And so we all, I think we all did the belly roll and then you went into the crawl, I did the crawl. And um, Mitch hadn't done the crawl yet, but we went too low. And when we did the second entrance, we like missed this crack that would have made that move very easy. Mm -hmm. And we ended up doing, making the move harder than it had to be. And Mitch being back there already kind of being uncomfortable, then seeing this last move that we did, he was like, I'm absolutely not doing that. Yeah. See you guys when you get down. Yeah. Which is fair. Like we were all, I went into it first and I was just like, all right, let's see how this feels. And I took a slightly different route than you did. I more the face of this rock. And it was like, yeah, it was kind of sketch. Yeah. Um, and then you got, you and Daniel both did it or you did it second and then Daniel. And it was like, okay, this is actually like, no joke. This is a, this is a cruxy move right here. Yeah. I basically just like smeared my way up it and just like pushed my arm as like trying to make it fall proof. Like Mm -hmm. just push my arm as deep as I can into this crack and just like slime my way up this wall. Cause I was like, I don't know what the beta is. I don't know what the right set of moves here is. Yeah. And the right answer would have been take a second, <laughs> sit down, put your climbing shoes on, look at the wall one more time. Cause I probably would have seen the right move. <clears throat> but in that moment I was hyped up and I was like, shit, just got to climb it. Yeah. Stick your arm into this crack and like work the rest of your body. We up know there. it's the second entrance and like, yeah. this would be the first entrance. It's definitely not that. So here we go. Second entrance. This must be the move. Yeah. And the reality is like, you could have kept your feet higher and gone into the same spot and had this other crack accessible to you. Yeah. And I also could have just put on, like the face move that you did, I would feel great doing in climbing shoes. Mm -hmm. It wasn't like a super hard move. No. But, you know, given that we're wearing like chunky tennis shoes, it makes everything a little bit more, a little bit more just uncomfortable. For sure. But ultimately I I feel like we managed all the risk really well. I think Um, we did a good job, yeah. And Daniel made everything look easy, Mm -hmm. so he's, his climbing was like unremarkable because he just yeah. like was no fuss. <laughs> just like, oh, I'll just do this. He just like slid yeah. up there real quick. I was impressed with him throughout the entire thing. For sure. And then after those cruxy bits, there was, yeah, then there was a few shoots and it was a little bit interesting to like find the trail because it felt like a lot of trails almost. Yeah. Like there was a lot of different ways you could do it. So we, and we were, yeah, trying to stick with the Owen Spalding route. 
And I think we stayed on that. Yeah. It was. You yeah. led the route from mm -hmm. there on up. You, because after you passed Mitch at the belly roll, you were in front the rest of the time and kind of yeah. were doing all the route finding. And I thought you did a good job. I mean, if you're someone listening to this and you're going to do the OS, it's like after the cruxy bit, you kind of crawl through this tunnel and come up, which is pretty mm -hmm. cool. And then there's really like two main chimneys. And yeah. then it's just like navigating from chimney one to chimney two and chimney two to the top. And I thought both of those were super fun climbing. They really were. Like it was like a long, like maybe hundred foot yep. chimney that wasn't super steep grade, and yeah, just a lot to hang on to. And you had to fun. look at every move. Like you had four yeah. points of contact. And you're like, okay, there's my right foot. There's my left hand. There's mm -hmm. my left foot. There's my right hand. And you're just kind of like constantly making progress up this thing without it ever being like super scary. I yeah. think the one caveat being there are like ledges in there. And I've heard that if you're there and there's like a rain freeze, thaw freeze uh -huh. cycle, it can get really slippery. Right. And if you were free soloing that and it was slippery, it wasn't at all for us, but. Yeah, there was like a few icy bits, but like could avoid them. Yeah, I don't think I ever really had to get on ice. Yeah. So it was nice. And then honestly, we were kind of like, uh ready to get down once we got up mm -hmm. we didn't spend that much time we're like okay great job we didn't yeah it was kind of yeah the storm we couldn't quite tell what was happening with the storm and also we were just like yeah we made our point let's um let's get to get to leveler ground <laughs> I, I think if uh if we had a situation where we didn't have another mile and a half swim 11 miles of running and a 23 mile bike ride maybe that's one of those situations where you sit up there and like enjoy a sandwich and uh -huh. you know spend more time up there but yeah i think we're all just like trying to get down through the climbing bits and back to mitch and like start the descent yeah and this whole time climbing i was like watching the weather and every once in a while you or daniel would be like so are you gonna swim back because they yeah knew how much i was hating it and i was like at first it was like a hard no like not getting back in the water I'm just gonna come back and then I'll take the ferry or I'll hike around or something. And then by the time, yeah, but then I was like, okay, so if the top socked in and we don't get to summit, no way I'm swimming back. Right. But if we do get to summit, then I feel like I need to. Because the the effort is still on. Right. Like if we don't if we don't summit, then you can't finish the picnic regardless. Yeah. So what's the point in swimming back? Exactly. But if we do summit somehow and uh -huh. the weather holds off, now there's a little more pressure to do the swim. Right. So I, I remember definitively like we got down through the cruxy bits and Daniel took off, just started yeah. hammering downhill to go and try and catch Mitch and Mitch is fast as hell. So they were both just gone. And me and you stopped to switch out of our climbing shoes and kind of did the descent together. Uh huh. And I don't know, I must have asked you two or three times over that next two hours, like, you know, first just planting the seed, like, how you feeling about the swim? <laughs> and you're like, uh, I don't not know. Not thinking about not, it yet. <laughs> not, not, really, not really feeling great. And then I feel like gradually as we got closer and closer, we got down off the mountain, we were on the flat walking trails. You're like, oh yeah, maybe I'll do it. Maybe I'll do it. <laughs> there was one point where you were telling me, you're like, I just don't see you not doing it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, okay, that's actually probably accurate. Like yeah. I'm going to, I'm going to attempt it. It'll just be slow. Right. And, and we made a handshake deal. Yeah. Where it was like, right. You do the swim. I'll stay with you the entire time, no matter how long it takes. And we'll get across and do it, do it proper. You know, you don't want to yeah. do these things like, um, and half ass it. Uh, mm -hmm. I want to come back to that later about half assing it. Um, but we wanted to make sure that we did everything right. We stayed, we made sure we stayed on the GPX, like the official route the entire time. Mm -hmm. We did the OS to spec, like yeah. we did everything the way it was supposed to be done. We swam intentionally east to west and west to east, like on the right line that we were supposed to swim. We did the bike route correctly. Like yeah. we wanted to make it proper. For sure. You don't want to do an 18 hour effort and be like, oh, well, I pretty much did it. Which we thought would be a 14 or 15 hour effort. Yeah, we were, we, were, <laughs> we were expecting to do it in 15. I think it was 1745 or something. Yeah. So, yeah. So anyways, we start the second swim. How you mm -hmm. feeling? How are you feeling getting back into the water, given that it's what, almost sunset? Yeah, it was like 7 p.m. Um, 
I was like my my knees were hurting on the run down for sure. Um, and just, yeah, feeling kind of undernourished, a little shaky and yeah, nervous as hell. <laughs> but I don't know. I, I feel like I had already come to a pretty like stable mental place. So I was like, this is going to take a long time. I'm just going to do what I'm going to do mm -hmm. and just like swim. And yeah, I didn't. Yeah, I wasn't scared in the water this time. I was like, wow, that's really far. I remember asking you like we were maybe halfway across. I'm like, are we moving? Like it felt like I was going so slow. And you know, you're like trying to gauge, like looking back, I'm like, okay, so a tree is about two inches tall there <laughs> and it's about three inches tall on that side. So that means maybe we're halfway. Right. And just trying to gauge because it felt like just, yeah, there's like the first quarter of the swim and then there's like, forever and then there's the last quarter of the swim <laughs> yeah and there's this point of which you at least when you're swimming with your head in the water and you're sighting maybe every six strokes one of them you kind of sight and you look about and you're like oh wait i'm kind of close like this is a lot closer than i remember like just a little while ago and from that point of i'm kind of close until you're actually done feels uh, like forever it's a really long time it's not it like you see a sign and you run past it on a road like that takes pretty quick. Mm -hmm. You see the other side and you're like, yeah, it's still going to be like it's 20 minutes. It's yeah. still going to be a long time. Which I feel like that's where I killed you a little bit because you were going really slow to keep stay back with me. You were getting cold and I'm like probably the most, the least aerodynamic or water dynamic that I could be because I'm basically a fucking doggy paddle. <laughs> so I'm like just dragging. So I'm working hard for like an hour, however long that swim took. So I'm like, I'm warm. I'm like working hard. Ryan's like being much more efficient. And so he's going really slow now, not working as hard. He gets, yeah, you get cold. Yeah. Super cold. And I would just kind of like do, you know, my strokes and do like, I don't know, 15. And then I'd look back and you'd be um, like I would just try to keep like an even split between us that I never got mm -hmm. far enough where I couldn't get to you if something happened. Yeah. And honestly, I was just kept looking back as the sun was setting behind the Tetons and there was all these clouds that almost looked like fiery smoke. It looked like the Tetons were on fire. It was the craziest view ever. Oh. And so for the first like 45 minutes of that, I was just basically just going backwards, staring at the Tetons, watching like how beautiful and magical it looked. Yeah. And like you underneath them, just like talking. <laughs> <across. laughs> yeah. And then I guess <clears throat> every time between those 10 or 15 strokes, I would just kind of wade or like tread water. Mm -hmm. And I think that was not a good idea. Looking yeah. back, like just sitting in the water makes you super cold. Right. Turns out. <laughs> so yeah, that was not my best idea. Yeah. And then Daniel and Mitch, they had swam ahead of us. So they were like out of the water. They were kind of ready to, they were getting cold and just like, okay, we're sitting around, like, let's get a show on. Daniel was slower on the bike. So he started riding. We got to shore. We started like switching out. And that's when I saw we were having issues <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, the cold, like it was starting to get really cold. And then we were recognizing a couple things that maybe didn't get in the, the dry bag that we were dragging. Yeah. Things like headlights and gloves and jackets and jackets. So what had happened was we got, we were super stoked because the guys at the boat dock were like, you can leave stuff here. You know, we'll help ferry it across like extra gear basically. Mm -hmm. And we we're like, okay, we'll just leave our gear on this boat dock thing or on this uh, boat and then we'll take what we need for our bike and I forgot a lot of stuff like headlamp and jacket and so we were super low on gear and at this point and maybe because I'm because um, I've been sick I'm like the lightest I've ever well lightest I've been since high school right now so I think my body is like super lean and having a hard time staying warm yeah and I just started jackhammering and it, I yeah. felt it happen 200 meters short of the shore all of a sudden I got so cold while we were still swimming that I was like getting dizzy in the water and yeah. we got out and I was just like jackhammering. I was like <clears throat> thinking about having to get onto the bike, which if you have never road biked, like in Teton national park, it's not warm. Like it's a nope. mountainous high area and you're on a road bike with wind penetrating against you and the sun, sun is, had just set sun is set. Like it's dark. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know how I'm going to make it through this. Yeah. 
So we were all going through gear because we left stuff there. We left our wetsuits and stuff there. So we were like, does anybody else? Mitch had a wind shell. Yeah, I wore Mitch's windbreaker. Okay. So that was that was great, but you didn't have gloves. Mm-hmm. You didn't have a light. Yeah. Well, we had my watch light. We had, which is about as good as a phone light. We yep. had your bike light, which uh-huh. ends up dying on the ride back. Yep. So then you take my watch light. I'm using my phone light. And we're, we're biking down yeah. this path. I'm like jackhammering. Yeah, it was. Uh, and this is interesting because like I've gotten to do a lot, like a decent amount of mountain adventures or just like fun things with you. And I've never <laughs> seen like you were riding your bike so slow <laughs> and you were scared like because of how fast you were going. <laughs> so there was a couple points where I'm like, all right, so I know you're determined to finish this. And also like, we need to watch what's where we're at right now. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like divvying up the lights, flashlights a little bit better. And then it was just like, I was like, okay, this is just going to be a really slow ride. Yeah. You were nice and gave me your light because I couldn't make out anything. I couldn't, yeah. I was having a hard time pedaling. I was having a hard time doing anything. Mm-hmm. And then you gave me your light and then we got out of the park and it was weird. Like, as you're riding back in to Jackson, you keep hitting these heat waves. I thought I was hallucinating, yeah. like having body hallucinations. But every, I mean, Daniel and Mitch talked about them too. For you're sure. riding on this path and it'll be 10 degrees warmer for like 200 yards. And it's like, oh, like a warm towel. And uh-huh. then you keep riding and it kind of goes back to normal. And you keep hitting these like weird heat pockets. Yeah, it was really And we caught those. And then we ended up like on the second half, probably averaging 12 to 15 miles per hour, which probably. is not fast. Yeah, I feel like there was like a, a, tra- a sh- energy shift. Like when we got out of the, like roughly around out of, out the, of the park. Out of the park, yeah. That's when you started like coming to life again a bit more. I was pretty much a retarded toddler from the lake until yeah. the box office of the park. Mm-hmm. Like I wasn't really using full words. I wasn't really able to no. like stay straight on the bike. Um, I th- And it's kind of cool. like we all had our moments yeah <laughs> like yep. daniel on the first bike a little slow you on the swim struggling uh-huh. a little bit. mitch feeling a little weird on the climb me having an absolute breakdown on the bike back like yeah everyone had a little bit of a moment and that's i think why it's so hard to do a big full day effort with four people is because everyone's gonna have moments at different times mm-hmm. and it's hard to like facilitate and keep check and make sure everyone stays together and the fact yeah. that for the 90 percent of this we were side by side i think is really yeah. impressive i know i feel like that was that was fun and cool to see how we were able to all like on the bike back like i was feeling good i was like i'm on dry ground again i'm good and so i was like okay what do you what do you need how can we like make this a healthy thing for all of us yeah but there was moments i was like okay so i know you're determined to finish this but also like i don't know if you're bodies in that place right now mm-hmm. so i was thinking mitch by now is probably home and taking a shower already so he can come back with a truck and maybe give another jacket or something so we yeah. can finish but then like once we started riding a bit more i was like okay i think we're doing good and then the flashlight dies <laughs> or the, <laughs> the bike light dies so i was like okay cool and then we're like using our cell phones it's cold as fuck like we're trying to like i can't feel my fingers at all trying to hold like a flash flashlight which goes just barely past the tire like it's yeah. not lighting the path by any means and then yeah. there's some like pretty big cracks in these paths so it was exciting yeah and somehow neither of us fell off the bike no somehow we we pedaled the whole way back and i knew like once we got within like three miles of town like you would start you would come down over jackson and you kind of come down this hill and you can see the city lights yeah and i knew like once we got to there i was like nothing can stop us right like no matter what happens here i'll walk this bike to the finish line like uh-huh. and we we were listening to this girl's fkt attempt uh she got the fkt but she actually was riding and hit i think her name's madison she hit the tire of her pacer with three miles left to go she goes over the handlebars <laughs> while still being clipped in like completely wrecks and somehow gets on the bike and still gets the fkt and that's what yeah. i was thinking about i was like if she wrecked like I'm going to make it through this. Uh-huh. Like I'm not uh-huh. stopping. <laughs> so, yeah. And then, yeah, we kept pushing and we made it. What, what time was it that we made it to the, it was like 10. So, yeah. 10 30, 11. Okay. Um, and you guys were all like, let's, uh, let's go get some pizza and pizza eat. and beers. Yeah. And I was like, <laughs> absolutely not. I'm going to take a hot shower 
and I will see you guys at the house. Like, cause yeah. we all got done and I think you guys had all warmed up. Willow, come here. What are you doing? Lay down. <laughs> this dog is crazy. <laughs> Lay down. We had, uh, gotten done. We're at the, uh, the arches and you guys are like, yes, we did it. Like we made it and everything's great. And in my head, I'm like, I'm still, I'm not back yet. Like no. my head is back, but my body's still like shivering inside. I'm like, I have to go get warm. Uh -huh. And so I literally took a hot shower and just put on the only clothes I had and got under some blankets and just laid there and like jackhammered in the bed until finally I warmed up. Mm -hmm. So yeah, I'm, I'm taking that. We just had a Leadville call today and I'm taking that into Leadville like priority one no more getting cold because yep. i've done this at a couple ultras and it's so stupid to let yourself get cold but i do mm. it all the time and it's like we just can't have that anymore yeah just need to make that not a thing and you probably know that as well as anyone because you have like negative six percent body fat uh-huh and so when you get cold it's just impossible it's kind of game over a little bit yeah how did you feel when you got done were you like this is the worst thing i've ever done or i want to do more of this Oh, I, it was a combination. <laughs> like I want to do more of this. I don't know if I want to swim more. My brother just sent me like a triathlon. Um, yeah, like there's this other triathlon that he wants me to do with him. And I'm, I don't know about that, but as far as like the mountain, yeah. Swimming, I, I got, I got to work on that, mm. but yeah, I want to, I want to get like some running in. I want to get some more fast packing, running, biking. Like I would love to do more. And now you're here in Colorado. Yeah. I guess for people that don't know, you've been kind of like vagabond lifestyle, building all these really cool buildings and mm -hmm. zones and domes and things, but now you're kind of yeah. planted here. Yeah. It's taken me, taken me around a bit and just kind of decided like Colorado's really where I want to be right now. And yeah, feeling just excited about whatever adventures we get into. Yeah. And it feels like there's a lot of good like energy in our group like a there lot is. of people trying to do big mountain <clears throat> adventures or build things or mm -hmm. um start new ideas it, it feels like there's a lot of good energy right now there is yeah <clears throat> i think generally those things revolve around being in the outdoors and pushing physical limits and that mm -hmm. feels like time well spent yeah i think both those things feel good absolutely What's, uh, so outside of that, what do you have on your mind? Like if you were like right now dreaming up of what would be my next adventure or mm. something that lights you on fire to work towards? I mean, yeah, I'm kind of excited just to like be here in Colorado and to like get back into some more like fun workflow. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, I mean, I really want to do uh, another an ultra mountain ultra mm. like more of just a running one probably yeah or or maybe a little bit longer maybe if it's, even if it's not running but like fast high elevation um something like you did this last weekend that type of thing or a shorter leadville type i don't know yeah yeah so some kind of mountain ultra or fast mm -hmm. packing adventure mm -hmm. i think the fast packing is really cool and yeah i, I guess think i'd for, get a kick out of that for context the one i did was the collegiate west um which is part of both the continental divide trail and the colorado trail and you're on the west side of the collegiate peaks which are like the most epic mountains or mm. some of the most epic mountains in the world and you're just basically going up and over these mountain passes for however long it takes you yeah and uh yeah i just did two days there so i think you'd really dig it the fast packing is a cool vibe because you can kind of mix in like a wilderness experience and an unsanctioned endurance event all into one. Yeah. Feels, <clears throat> feels aligned. For sure. I guess my next thing in the books is going to be trekking in Peru. Oh, okay. End of the month. I'm going out there to help like lead a pilgrimage. Tell me about that a little bit. <clears throat> that is, it's basically like visiting a lot of um, sacred sites with um, the indigenous people there. Mm. And yeah, it's like kind of a lot of, a lot of medicine, a lot of prayer, a lot of singing. And then, but you're just like in these beautiful mountains, mm. just like these lakes that are, there's this one Quinsecocha um, lake that you can see the bottom of it. Like you can see every stone that's in the bottom of this like mountain lake. 
and it's just like extremely cold um but really deep and like you can just like it's very small and you can just see everything in it it's so beautiful and so that's kind of like <laughs> there's a bit of hiking and trekking and it's also like um like medicine journeys built into that like how does mm -hmm. that work how, how yeah does, how does that work between the two so it's working a lot with a cactus they're called washuma washuma that um or san pedro and yeah so it's basically just like this medicine loves to just like i don't know we basically make a tea and then we drink the tea and hike and pray and sing hmm. and there's just like nothing quite so profound hmm. this is like kind of every year or the last few years I've been doing this, this is like the point where I go and make sure life is making sense and I'm doing mm. it the way I want to. Mm. And just like a really good like reframe and like come back around. Okay. Is this how I want to be living? Here we go. And yeah. So it's been a, a really profound part of my life. It's like a time of reflection each year. Yeah. And you're guiding this now or you're... I'm assisting guiding gotcha. it. Yeah. What's the group called? Um, it's with Kula Collective, Kula Collective. Um, based, based out of Guatemala. Okay. It's a kind of like a yoga healing medicine retreat space and collective, I guess. <clears throat> so they're in Bali, Canada. They're around a bit, but, um, mainly in Guatemala hmm. and then every year doing, uh, the treks in Peru. The pr that sounds gnarly to me. Cause like, I don't know, in my mind, like you think of like a medicine journey and a little bit of like. Uh, come down or like a reset period associated mm -hmm. with that. But like if you're hiking in Peru, like it's pretty gnarly terrain. Yeah. So I imagine that there's like a lot of polarity there between those two. There is. And they also blend really nicely mm. where like there's times where we've been out and it just like decides it's going to snow because we're like very much at elevation, even in, in the middle of summer. Mm. And it like it will snow a few inches and it's like, OK, we're still just going to keep like I've got so many videos of us just dancing around fires, um, in the snow and yeah, it's, uh, we make it work. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's a pretty special time. Sweet. Well, if people want to kind of like keep up, I know you do some of your building stuff is, uh, is on the Instagram and, mm -hmm. and all that kind of thing. If people want to keep up with you, where can they find you? Yeah. Basically Instagram it's Osborne underscore David, I think Osborne underscore David and uh gonna be doing some more unique builds you think for sure for sure Th right now i'm gonna be doing a lot of pull barns okay it's kind of the plan me and daniel will be or i'm it's daniel's company that i'll be working with uh getting some of that set up and but then yeah definitely wanting to do some more of these domes and zones i've just finished up this geodesic dome out in georgia and that's just a really fun creative build for amazing space whether homes or event space or things like that. So I'm also working on the shipping container that I turned into a home, getting that all dialed in down in New Mexico. So yeah, there's always, always new ventures. Maybe a shipping container in my backyard. Could be doing that. We'll <laughs> see. <laughs> all right. Well, I appreciate you coming on here and uh, yeah, until next time, stay well. Yeah. Thank you so much. Peace guys.